Hello everyone, my name is Ksenia and I'm an application specialist in BioVitrum company. We are working in the field of pathology for more than 15 years and during that time we accumulated some knowledge and experience in this area. We decided to make a series of videos in which my colleagues and I will discuss histological process, its basics, some theory and also interesting facts and some tricks and tips to make it easier. If you are interested, keep watching! Last time we discussed paraffins with different melting points, what is the difference between them and what to choose for different purposes. But the properties of an embedding medium depend a lot on the chemical composition of the mixtures. What additives can be used and what do manufacturers add to their embedding mediums to modify plasticity or to increase density of paraffin blocks? Laboratory assistants or technicians used to prepare embedding mediums by themselves. They took paraffin, put their additives, usually wax, heated it and mixed to get a homogeneous product. It took quite a lot of time and the result always depended on the quality of raw materials. Nowadays, there is a wide variety of ready-to-use embedding mediums from different manufacturers. First of all, manufacturers carry out the quality control of incoming raw materials. They have certified recipes for their embedding mediums, so they know for sure what amount of which additive to use. Moreover, they have the modern equipment to prepare a homogeneous mixture and to control the process from the very beginning to the end. After all, they control the quality of the final product before sending it to the laboratories. We will tell you about the technology of embedding medium preparation on our manufacture in one of our next videos. So what additives can be used for embedding mediums? Natural wax was used for many years. Waxes are a diverse class of organic compounds. They are hydrophobic solid substances. They consist of higher alkanes with different functional groups, for example fatty acids, alcohols, amines, cations, and so on. Natural waxes are produced by plants, for example rice or palm wax, or by animals. Beeswax is still the most popular. Different waxes can be added to embedding mediums to reduce the density of paraffin blocks. Another common additive is stearine or stearic acid. Stearines are triglycerides derived from three units of stearic acid. It is commonly used in industry producing candles and soap as hardening agent. Added to paraffin in embedding mediums, it can increase the density of paraffin blocks. Usually from 1 to 10 percent of stearine is added to paraffin. But we should remember that stearic acid in high concentrations can react with metals and can influence the result of the study. To increase the plasticity of paraffin blocks, polyolefin can be added. Polyolefins are the polymers of unsaturated hydrocarbons such as polyethylene, polypropylene, polybutene and so on. Polyolefins are also used quite often in industry. Embedding mediums with polyolefins aided demonstrate higher plasticity. It is easier to cut sections on microtome, sections do not crumble, and it is easier to straighten them on water baths after microtomy. The same result can be achieved if we use polyvinyl acetate as an additive. The substance is commonly known in glue production. Some embedding mediums can contain up to 25% of PVA. Such embedding mediums demonstrate very good tissue infiltration and elasticity of microtome sections. Cerizine or microcrystalline paraffin is a mixture of saturated hydrocarbons with more carbon atoms in a molecule than in normal paraffin, from 35 to 60. It has smaller molecules than long straight paraffin it creates branches in its structure, increasing hardness, strength and elasticity. It is important to remember that different paraffins from different manufacturers have different properties. Always pay attention on what is written in the instruction. 
it is usually explained what additives were used, what are the properties of embedded medium and what type of tissue it is recommended for. If you choose reagents for your work properly, you will be able to achieve better results. After tissue processing, embedding and microtomy, it is time for staining. In our next video, we will discuss how Ira van Gizon decided to stain connective tissue and how the cooperation of microbiologists and pathologists in 1880s gave us a good method to identify bacteria in human tissues. If you like this video, press like. If you have any questions, write them in comments. Subscribe not to miss our new videos. See you soon.